<clears throat> this just in, we have a pro microscope micro photographer stud studess in our presence. Um, we are so happy to have Marissa join us when she can. And when she can't, she's taking these amazing photos. And I mean, some of them are just downright shocking and, and I would love to know what they are. So, um, Marissa, I, you sent me 20 pictures. I'm going to flip through these and we're going to ooh and ah and probably ask what the heck we're looking at. <laughs> Hi, Marissa. Hey, guys. Hey, Marissa. Hey, Marissa. Oh, Marissa. <laughs> I, I love these cracks up here. Mm. Marissa has this unique technique. Um, of, of taking these pictures with uh, a mix of transmitted uh, cross-polarized light and incident cross-polarized light. And she gets these amazing views of uh, some of the chondrules. Like oh that, yeah, that one is just stunning. <laughs> That's, it's, That's, part of it is yes. Bart olivine chondrule. Part of it is, is uh, uh, porphyrific. Uh, and the the gray stuff that's around the colored grains is glass. Wow. wow. Marissa, I am blown away. I mean, just that is beautiful. Amazing, amazing work. That's a Rembrandt yeah. or Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is um NWA 4560, and it is an LL 3.2. Ooh, so we're talking some primitive stuff. Like, yeah, some, like some most... pretty amazing. I mean, it's just wall to wall conjures and, you know, the matrix, ha the matrix has, you know, just a bunch of mixed up broken conjures everywhere. So it's just everywhere you look, there's always something new to see. This yeah. one is. Crazy. 4560 is one of the most beautiful meteorites uh, wow. I've ever seen. What is this called? Uh, what, wow. What, like, what do you call mm. that? Looks like Jupiter. I, <laughs> it looks like Uranus. Yeah, yeah that, that one is a radio pyroxene. Radio. Radio. Wow. I love this. Yeah, and the see, this one is that's uh, at about four o'clock too, that shows the yellow uh, crystals and then the spray of of crystals. That yeah. one is it's it's a complex because it has both kinds of crystals, but the background part of that one is also radio pyroxy. Wow, this is just beautiful. Yep. This yeah, I'm not able to measure the conjures, mm -hmm. so I couldn't tell you how many millimeters it is, but that is the largest conjure in that thin section. <laughs> okay, guys, <laughs> I'm seeing the next picture already, and I'm just waiting for you guys to see it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yep. beautiful. Wow. Did you... Yeah do less of the polarization on this one or um no that that's totally polarized that's that's um um i forget if i used both transmitted and reflective lighting or just transmitted from my light pad but that's that's just across polarized light beautiful and so technically that one, the, 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 the lower one there is a polysomatic barred olivine chondrule. So each, each of the plates there that are sitting, you know, roughly parallel to each other, as long as they're the same false color, they are, all of that is in the same crystal orientation. Mm -hmm. And so even though they, they show up as plates. We know that they have to be interconnected somehow to be able to all be the same um, 
the, the, the same crystal lattice direction. And that one has uh, plates going in at least three different directions. So yeah. that's the polysomatic part of it. That's awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Keep talking that scientific talk, my man. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, no, no, no. We weren't done yet. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Yeah. That is gorgeous. Those are so beautiful. This, this is like God's stained glass windows inside exactly. of a rock. Exactly. Oh, so wow. are the colors due to the orientation or are there different mineral types that are mixed in? Some of both. Um, so the, the way the thin section photography works is uh, the light enters a, a particular piece of crystal and breaks into two beams, the ordinary and extraordinary beams. And then it comes out and recombines. And based on how much delay there is of the, you know, because those light pads are different, different lengths, that determines what false color you get. But there is a way to mess around with it to get a characteristic false color, which allows you to measure the refractive index and also allows you to identify a mineral. Cool, thanks. I'm guessing, thank you very much, Pat. I'm gonna to have to watch this on replay because uh, there's some knowledge bolide being dropped on everyone right now. Marissa, I'm guessing this yeah. one, Carbonaceous? Yes, this is from my Allende. I see me. Beautiful. Go big or go home. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. It's so beautiful. The little dark spheres mm -hmm. in with the with There's the minerals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Just fantastic. And we're zoomed way in there. <laughs> yeah man i'd like to get this in the size of wallpaper and do an entire room of yeah, Melissa's like, thin uh, section like uh neil buckland with his mm -hmm. work wow it, look it, oh my god i see what's coming next look at this one first <laughs> yes i have no idea what this is um it everything to me right now looks like brain tissue <laughs> i got brain <laughs> tissue on, on my mind but what is this <laughs> Uh, hard to say, but I think the, the large, um, uh, sort of speckly stripey stuff is probably a CAI. Mm -hmm. Marissa, do you agree? Yes. I, I believe I zoomed in on a CAI. That's what I attempted to do because mm -hmm. actually this is all with just my cell phone and editing with just my cell phone. So wow. the original image was bigger and I cropped it and edited it a little bit. Should and we should probably, probably do a commercial for Samsung too. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, probably. if Marissa is able to, nothing personal, but if Marissa is able to get <laughs> this type of results with a cell phone and her tenacious determination, there's no excuse for any of us. That's why I'm not even trying. <laughs> no kidding. I'm wow. very, very picky. And I, I go through and I'm picking out the best of the best that came out as sharp as I could possibly get it. And I'm just a perfectionist. And technology sets me free and allows me to do all of this. Absolutely. It shows. It definitely well, shows. You're an artist. Yeah. And, and Marissa has a leg up on most of us. She's got the new S21 Samsung phone as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, its ability to capture the most light is amazing. Even on just a normal photo and not even in nighttime mode, it catches a good amount of light. Like, I, have I wish that everybody could see what I see in my microscope. It is dark as heck that hmm. looking through it with your eyes is really not helpful. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Just perfect use of technology. You know, look at yeah. this. That chondral is, to me is just stunningly beautiful. And it's, it's amazing, amazingly complex too. Uh, Marissa, did, did you decide this was a radial pyroxene? 
Yeah, I think that's what it is. It it works very similar to those. Yes, uh, I, think, but, I think the one to the left, the small one to the left, the half one. That's that's got fantastic myrmachitic texture. Doesn't it? Yeah, that's beautiful. And tell me, it doesn't look like human brains. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the, the rays that, that Marissa has captured through this radial pyroxene chondrule are, it, that, that's not something I've seen in other uh, thin section photos. That, mm -hmm. That's a, that, that's, I, I want to know how that's done. <laughs> yeah. this, you know, anyone can, anyone can slap paint on a canvas, <clears throat> but there's only one Picasso, okay? <laughs> <laughs> This yeah. we and the outline this. of this chondral, I think, is very interesting too. You can see the spherical part of it, but then mm -hmm. it's a it's got a blob of stuff stuck to it at three o'clock, and another yep. blob stuck to it at ten o'clock, and then yep. a bite out of it at uh, eight o'clock. I it it almost looks like the part at nine o'clock was displaced to three o'clock, but that doesn't, that's not represented in the, uh, in the fracture lines or whatever you're seeing. It, look, yeah, it looks like at least maybe four chondrules. I, I think come it probably together is some Donald. Point I, and then it's a, yeah. And I, and I think this is some action where, uh, when the, the chondrule was still, uh, you know, as it was forming other blobs added on, and the, the cooling story on this one, I think, is probably very complex. That is wild. Marissa, I'm using some of your pictures for my thumbnail because I need the E2 clicks. <laughs> That's okay. Copyright, copyright. That's got to be carbonaceous. Yes, that's that's still I-N day. I-N day. Wow. Just stunning. That yellow crystal reminded me of Pac-Man. <laughs> yes. It does. It looks like an asteroid rubble yeah. pile in space. Wow. This is you're you're amazing at what you're able to capture. Like even the even the detail within the this, this is like the stellar uh, um solar grains uh, of the mm -hmm. universe right here. Like Look at this. There are some amazing mysteries inside of Allende uh, and the other carbonaceous chondrites. Mm -hmm. There's. Now, here is one that, that might uh, talk about what we were talking earlier. Remember, Art showed his slice of, uh, of Chris Monk's piece, and it appeared they appeared to have rings around them, but they weren't um, iron or, or nickel iron rings, meaning they weren't armored chondral. Um, what is it called when you have a, a, a ring around a chondral like this? Well, so I think this is where we're seeing the, um, you know, the biofringent effect. Um, minerals like olivine and pyroxene and so forth are biofringent in that, you know, the, the light comes in and splits into the two rays. But uh, the um, matrix here is largely glass. And mm -hmm. glass as a material is amorphous. Amen. So you don't get the light beam splitting into two beams. Uh, and so it appears uh, opaque. It appears dark uh, in transmitted cross polarized. Oh, oh, isotropic. Yeah. Very nice definition there. And then there's every shape known to man in there. Mm hmm. You want six sides, we got it. You want four sides, we got it. <laughs> you want a yellow one with eight sides? Hey, let me work on it. <laughs> it's amazing just how they pick their their niche and where to uh, just congeal. And yeah. uh, that's where they froze, right in that position. It's, that's how they, for billions of years. Yes. Look at and these. Perfectly just round chondrules on chondrules on chondrules on chondrules. And, and you have like this one up here at 11 o'clock. Oh, that yeah. It has seems to be a barred olivine, really yeah, wide bars. Broken mm -hmm. bit of a barred olivine chondrule. Yep. 
And then yeah. over here at one o'clock, you have three different chondrules, all well, three larger chondrules in here. One is showing yeah. linear lines, and then one is another, you know, pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marissa, is this four, five, six, zero? Yes. Okay. Oh, we didn't even look at this one down here. Let's give you some attention. <laughs> any uh, any name for this one? That's probably a barred olivine chondral. And because there appear to be at least two different directions, I think it's fair to call it a polysomatic barred mm -hmm. olivine chondral. I think it's probably also fractured as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a piece polysomatic of means multi-angled? Right. Okay. Multiple sets of plates that have different... Uh, crystal lattice orientation. Mm -hmm. Back to Allende, and we got a donut in there. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> With sprinkles. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much information, and Donald, please, please uh, <laughs> jump in here. There's so much information about the cooling histories on these chondrules that I, I, I know there's new stuff to learn yet. Yeah, anyone smarter than me is allowed to talk, <laughs> which is pretty much everyone on the line right now. These are beautiful and complex. Like the the, the reason that we're not, we're seeing all this black area, if you wanted to, you could get it to a point where we would see all that and not see the other stuff that we want to see. Is that correct? Yeah. So in in, in transmitted cross polarized light, the well in 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 Allende, the matrix is just is black in regular light. Um, so it's just called an opaque part of the of the thin section. Mm -hmm. So Pat, if you were to turn the oh, stage wow. of the wow, yeah. part, you would be able to see the difference in the polarized that light. Is extraordinary. Oh, another barred chondral. Yeah, look, that one is so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The whole field of view is beautiful. That, is fantastic. that one is a lot more complex. It looks like the Death Star in Star Wars. <laughs> what is this? Wow. A hastily comprised spider web. Wow. So I, I, I think what we're seeing there. Sort of partial melting, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think it's also quite possible that we're seeing, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a polysomatic barred olivine chondral, but mm -hmm. I but I think we're seeing unusual orientation too. The stuff to the lower left may well be those plates face on. Instead of seeing the edge of a plate, we're seeing the face of a plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that one is so beautiful because the 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 plates that Topher is pointing out there in the in that one major direction, some are thin, some are thick, some are blobby, mm -hmm. some are straight. Yep. That one is just like so beautiful. What I don't get are these blue. Now like, that that's probably also just olivine, but because of the uh, you know the the crystal lattice being in a different direction, they show up as a different color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It it's only thirty microns thick, so there can't be that many layers. I mean, there are some different layers to this thing as you as you do your focal point on the microscope focal depth. You can mm -hmm. see different layers of, of the thin section. Mm -hmm. Would, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around this. How are these planyards, these going, they're not, they're, they're broken, but they're not pushed out of the way. This is yes. just shoved there, but without really, I, I see no disturbed material. Well, what we're seeing there are the edge of, two different sets of plates so there's one that runs you know from the upper right to the lower left the, the brown colored ones and so that that's one whole set of plates and of course in the thin section we're just looking at a random slice through it and then the plates that are dark blue are a different orientation and as the chondrule cools the olivine is crystallizing but it's com the olivine coming out of out of solution is is crystallizing into different plates and they're competing with each other for the supply of of olivine in the, in that molten droplet 
also during the cooling, they they would be retracting from themselves from the other rather than one interjecting itself. It, it would more of a, be a, a, gen, a general, you know. You know they're they're all they're all growing at the same time. Hmm. Right. Okay. They're all growing at the same time. And so, you know, when there's when you start at multiple points, so you're going to have a polysomatic chondral with plates going multiple directions they're competing for that for the uh, olivine that's in solution in that melt of the chondral and they just grow up to the point where they run out of of olivine gotcha. and you wind up with the matrix in between all those plates and and the thing that just blows me away is all of those plates that are kind of that medium brown color those are all in the same crystal orientation so they all interconnect yeah mm. it it takes a it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around the microscopic i'm i i struggle with that but this is well, we're, we're translating from a 2d view of a slice through yeah. it to what's going on in 3d yeah yeah beautiful wow. <laughs> Look at the harsh lines, the, the, the harsh, well, I'm going to say harsh lines on this one compared to like the texturized grainy material uh, on the other ones. Is this still Allende? Yes. Wow. Beautiful. Now, Donald, I, when, I, when I see the darker areas with the narrower bands, that kind of looks like polysynthetic twinning. Do, what do you yeah, think? I think? I think these might be pyroxenes though. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think th those parts are pyroxene, but I, I, but I, I'm thinking that it's twinning that causes that, that striping from light to dark. I thought maybe it was twinning. Twinning is when two crystals grow uh, alongside each other. It's when one, one crystal grows uh, in one direction and another one right beside it grows in exactly the opposite direction. Okay, like I'm looking at these two right here. Um, if you guys can see those. Yeah, so you you have a you have a, the darker part go, going one direction, the lighter blue part going the other direction, and then just stack up layers of those. If you were to if you were to spin this sample on your stage, the colors would change, exchange. Right. You, know, you would see them twinkling. Here's a close up of one. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and look at the one that's down that's down around five four o'clock. Yeah. yeah, or five o'clock. Yeah, so that's looking at the first one end on basically. Yeah, Th these right. long. Let me see if I can do this. These long lines here go from here down into the chondral, all the mm -hmm. way in a three D world. So what we're looking at here, long or short ways is here long ways these are all plates and you know we've made a random slice through a stack of plates and depending on whether you cut it directly at 90 degrees to the plates or at some lesser angle to the plates mm -hmm. okay so it, it doesn't ha necessarily have to be perpendicular but it is it it is uh, a different angle but of the same feature Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Nice. That one is so beautiful, Marissa. <laughs> yeah. And look at all the metal in there. Yeah, this is NWA 869. Oh. And this is just in. Plain polarized light. It's not crossed. Wow. That's why we can see the metal. <laughs> and and it's and and it's a, a a really cool combination of some room light, some reflected light, as well as the transmitted light. So yeah, the metal shows up instead of just inky black. It shows up gray. Mm -hmm. But that chondral in the center is not <laughs> round. It's yeah. oblong. And the plates are not, it's, it's a barred olivine chondral, but the plates are not flat. They're wavy. Yeah. 
That, yeah. that one is just stunningly beautiful. And it's then the, the great the gray patchy halo around about it that interests me. Yeah, yes. All, all this around here. Yeah, yeah. Around the outside. I don't know if that, if that's metal or sulfide mm -hmm. or, or, or what. I'm not sure. Or if that's actually um some uh, some silicate mineral. I'm not sure at all. Yeah. Well, and, and also, you know, the, there's the striped middle part of the chondral, but it has a nice rim of olivine around it. And then these amoeboid sort of bits yeah. of olivine around that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if anyone else sees this or not, but I usually don't see a whole lot of weird things in meteorites, but I swear <laughs> there's an alien right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Standing yeah. sideways. <laughs> Yeah, you go. You got them. Yeah. This is a really cool slice and a really cool picture. Um, a lot of times, um, thin sections, well, thin sections are expensive. Um, you know, 45 to 80 bucks for material uh, for, for one, depending on the material you can get. I've seen them for a thousand dollars for very rare material, but this is 869. This is uh one of the most like two ton or not two ton yeah more than two tons of this stuff has fallen um yeah. or been collected so it's you know 50 cents to 80 cents a gram and it's classified as an l4-6 so it has l4 l5 and l6 class and chondrules in it and 869 is classified under many different numbers yeah sahara 2500 uh, yeah and um, it, it's, you know, it's a, it's a very common meteorite and we see it from the outside and we see that bluish gray sort of look to the crust and like, yeah, it's an 869. Uh, 869 is vastly underappreciated. Yeah, <laughs> there is. There, there's this magic inside it. Marissa, what is this one? This is um, still the NWA. 4560. Okay. And Good. it's in plain polarized light. And I turned on the um, the overhead filter. I turned on the light for reflective light. So you see a little bit of cross polarization too. So it's a little bit of mix of both. And that's so magical because in these chondrules where we see kind of the gray, you know, the, the one at the top there, um, those are olivine crystals, I think, Donald, rather than pyroxene. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and in between the light gray material is the glass, which would normally mm -hmm. just be inky black. But because there's a little reflected light as well, we get to see the glass. That's just so beautiful. So These are fantastic. And then like this, this one right here has tons of little stuff inside of it versus this one over here, just like large chunks and crystals. This is beautiful. And, and look at the one that's down around four o'clock. Uh, yeah, there you go. That guy. Look at all the colors in there and, mm -hmm. the, and the gradation of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, from from purple to blue to yellow to green to amber to orange. Yeah. All yeah. Roy G. Biv. <laughs> exactly. That one is stunning. Yeah. I, the one at seven o'clock too. Looks like it's got the Grand Canyon running through it. Yeah. <laughs> Water and all. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That's the NWA 869, but now it's in cross polarized. So that same purple one you saw earlier, this is in cross polarized and it, it turned a vibrant green. <laughs> and notice as we expected, and as uh, Pat pointed out, the metal is now gone. It's there, it's but it's just, black. there's no reflective light reaching the lens from that metal it's been filtered out that's what yeah. polarization cross polarization <clears throat> that's what we're talking about yeah so these things surrounding the the big chondral are either metal or sulfide is them i think yes i think that's true do you think this well, right here at three the way you're uh, <laughs> thinking oh, i'm sorry 
Go, go ahead. We have Marissa, whatever you're doing, however you're doing it, write it down for the, the actual like distances and lighting and filter situations. Because if you go to improve what you're doing, it's going to change what you're doing. But what you're doing right now is showing off stuff that other photographers would bring out something different. Yours is bringing out something I have never seen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, thank Alex. you for that. Yeah, that's a good I, recommendation. I'll definitely be taking notes down and writing down step by step what I'm doing. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I haven't seen a bad one yet. Just keep doing what you're doing. It's so fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, Donald, I, I, I completely well, agree with you. And these are coming from people who look at this stuff for a living, basically. So, yeah, I'm, I echo what but, they're saying. But, but when, when I look at things, seconds, I look at them either in transmitted or in reflected light. This, this is 50% science and 50% art. These are beautiful. Yeah. These mm -hmm. are really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I learned when I tried to acid etch my Gibeon, uh, that I'm not an artist. Uh, <laughs> right here, uh, this one here at three o'clock, does that look like a bleached chondral to you? I don't think that one is. Uh, I think that's just basically a radial pyroxene chondral. Okay. Uh, Marissa, do you agree? Um, either that or it's an ortho pyroxene. Mm -hmm. oh. We're going to have to have Marissa give a class. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm learning as I go. So I'm just, I'm looking at these. I'm reading about them. I come back. I see new stuff that I couldn't recognize. And now I, I read a book and I figure out, oh, that's what this feature is. So then I go back with new, fresh eyes and I always find something new. So I'm learning as I go, but loving taking pictures. That's absolutely fantastic job. Yeah, I'm, I'm super glad you can get lost in this. Yeah, the chondral in the center is so pretty. <laughs> And you you are look at this one here radiating out just like you said, <clears throat> and this blue one over here in a corner. Wow. Yeah, I mean photos don't really they're good, but looking at them with your eyes, it, it's just I mean everything pops. The colors are way more vibrant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way wow. the pastel colors work through that chondral is just gorgeous. That's for sure. Um, that's God's watercolors inside a space rock. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely said. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. We're we're running out of gushing things to say, but the, then they keep <laughs> coming. Look at this. Oh yeah. yeah. I have no idea what this drippy one is over here. I think probably a broken radial pyroxene chondral. Uh, uh, Marissa, what do, you, what do you think? I think so too. I mean, it looks like it's radiating to me in two different directions. Yeah, you, yeah, you have it been, coming it's down. Been a, it's, been a, it's been a big, big chondral, I think. You can see the diameter from the outer. outer. Uh, right. Loop circle. Right. But then it then it's it's got some sort of reaction rim, the brown color round about it after it's been cracked, after it's been broken. Mm -hmm. Look at the mm -hmm. true size of that. You're right. I didn't even notice that like it doesn't end here. It goes all the way down. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. And that's another one of those ones with bits of olivine floating in, in the gray glass that's just captured so wonderfully. Wow. This is amazing work, Marissa. I'm really, really thankful that you um, shared it with us today. Um, just, whoop, there we go. Really glad that you shared it with us today, shared your art with us. And um, I know you're an absolute science lover. So it's really, really cool to 
jump in, in your brain for an hour and just live in your microscopic, beautiful world. So thank you for sharing, honestly. I really yeah, appreciate well, it. Stunning. Uh, thank you, Marissa. Topher, I think there's more. Marissa? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I can go to my phone and it's hooked up to my microscope right now. And okay. I can try a live view and let you guys see it and have an actual live look. And you can just tell me when to stop. And, you know, you see something you like and yeah. Let's get it. I'm a good yeah. look at it. I think we are all in. So we'll hit pause and we'll get right there. All right. Now that is not a photo. We are live with Marissa and I'm handing you the mic. Uh, yep, uh, this is live and. Whoa. You guys don't want to look at me. <laughs> wow, where's Marissa at? She's way cute. loser. Okay, this is not a photograph. We are now looking through the eyepiece of Marissa's microscope, and I'm going to hand her the mic. It's now the Marissa Thin Section Show. Thank you, Topher, and uh, just want to give a shout out and a thank you to my sister because I can't set this, any of this up by myself, and she's my hands, and had there been any other staff here with me, you would not be able to get this right now. We love you, sis. Thank you. you thank you, sister. Yep, thank you. So you are looking at a live image. Beautiful. Of NWA 4560. Since the topic of the hangout tonight was all about chondrules, I figured this would be the best one to show. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Marissa, are you doing this with your phone? Yes, my phone is attached to my microscope right now. I see. Wow. What type of stones would be in that kind of a, with con chondral? I mean, what's it made out of, like silica or? Yeah, exactly. D different types of silicates and, and um the like the the blackish parts are going to be more uh the of the iron the metal the sulfides those type of things uh, i could be corrected yeah it's just a bunch of mixes of silicates olive beans and you know little splashes of metal here and there but being an ll there isn't much metal so there's tons of olivine and silicates so that's an LL 3.2, I believe? Yes. OK, thank you. And is that through Marson? That is crazy complex. Absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, the, the picture won't be perfect because, of course, it's a camera looking through a lens, but uh, it's it's pretty good, and and that's a probably another um, Pat. What did you call that? Poly. Oh man! Uh, oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, the one at about three o'clock is a polysomatic Bartolomean oh. control. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Everyone has to say that 10 times before you go to sleep tonight to remember it, okay? Polysomatic barred olivine chondral. Polysomatic <laughs> barred olivine chondral. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Nice. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm still learning as I go. And I'm still learning the names of these chondrules. And most of the time, I, I leave it to uh, Pat Brown to... Mm -hmm use all of the terminology because I'm 
you know, with, with my disability and my speech, I'm afraid I'm not pronouncing it clear enough. So I just leave it up to him to, you know, say all of these scientific terms and that way people can hear it pronounced correctly. No, you're coming through loud and clear, Marissa. Yeah, you're, you're yes. clear. Marissa, we love Pat. We, we all listen to Pat Brown for the scientific explanation of it. But yeah. again, your work is beautiful. Is the, the light reflecting off of those, is it, is it just like random light dispersion or are the blues all the same thing and the pinks all the same thing and the yellows all the same thing? Or is it's, it just random? So it, it, it's kind of complicated and probably uh, a meeting or a, a, a hangout all in and of itself, but this is transmitted cross polarized light. So this is a very thin slice of a meteorite that's been polished carefully on both sides it's 30 microns thick so it's a few wow. a few hairs thick and there's a light source underneath and then a polarizer on top and then the slice of the meteorite and then in the optical path there's another polarizer that's at 90 degrees to that polarizer coming up through the bottom wow marissa does your camera have autofocus or do you have to do it all in the microscope. Um, my phone has autofocus, so it's focusing as best it can. Look at that big old conger. I, I know. Uh, the black rim <laughs> around it. That's so yeah. pretty. And I mean, I mean that, you're doing this with a camera or a phone. I mean, it's I know. phenomenal. Are yeah. you seeing it through the ocular, or is it a trinocular scope? It's um. It, it's it's through the eyepiece. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's through the through the eyepiece. It's just just a standard, you know, phone holder, and the the only thing that we're not able to get <clears throat> because, as amazing as this is when you're there and you actually have the microscope bioptics working correctly for your eyes and they're, and they're spaced apart correctly, everything turns into 3D. It's the most amazing thing in the world. The first time I was able to achieve it, I, it's like a breakthrough moment. You're like, oh my God, did you see what just, one of, like, like one of those uh, pictures that you put on the wall and you have to cross your eyes to see a, you know, a guy on a bike or something. <laughs> Within minutes of every thin section I've ever bought, I mean, minutes of opening it and looking at it under the scope minutes, it was wow, wow, wow for hours sometimes. But uh, beautiful. Is it, is it easy for you to change to, to plain polarized, Marissa? Uh, no, it's not. I'd have to actually, you know, physically turn my light pad that it's on and then that would mess up the focus and it might not come in clear enough. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, this, this microscope setup is a wild, um, the Swiss company, uh, the wild um, M3 and uh, the, the light source is actually a tracing pad. So th this is a pretty customized setup. Although uh, Marissa does have a, uh, another polarizing microscope that she'll get as soon as I'm done messing with it. So that, that one will have, uh, that you'll be able to, to switch to plain polarized easily and rotate the stage and so forth. Mm -hmm. How do they get them even that thin? What do they use to precision cut something that... <laughs> not going that to that like is it. an amazingly hard trick to cut a slice that that thin and get it that parallel um yeah it, I think it's diamond saws or it it you know, it's a diamond saw and then a whole bunch of levels of of uh grinding and polishing to get to the right thickness and to get a, a near perfect polished surface on both sides totally amazing did you did you see in uh, earlier in the in the hangout we had um 
James show us the piece that he's sending in for classification. And in addition to the piece that he's sending in for classification, he had another little six gram piece on the side that he said that was, that was slated for the thin section process. Yeah. That is going to be cut down as thin as possible, but still thick, thicker than pencil lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to mount it onto something and use a, a grinder or something, usually a glass surface with some grind material, some sand or whatever, and, and they polish it on that. So they're polishing it with a glass backer, the thin meteorite, and then a, another thing of, with the glass. And they do that grind and they get it as thin as possible. Th well, 30 microns and then as level as possible. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. A couple of people here in the group actually do their own thin sections. Yep. Stephen, Stephen Amara makes some of his and he showed the successes and also some of the non-successes, I'll call them, <laughs> because uh, half the, the slide is good thin section, the other half is glass. <laughs> yeah. So, beautiful. beautiful. Oh, that's a pretty one right up at 12 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. 12 o'clock. Yep, right there. Yeah. Looks like a small heart. Small heart, yeah. Two yeah. dead. It's it's crazy. Um, geez, look at that. That's like one of my favorite barred olivines right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one's it got looks, plates going every direction. It looks yep. like a Van Gogh starry night chondral. <laughs> there you go. On. Someone gave it a noogie. Cut off my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what's yeah, what's great? I still have a lot to photograph in this. Yeah, yeah this is a really busy thin section. There's look a lot. At that. There. What is that like? Question mark melt thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we um, me and Pat kind of think that it it could be a calcium aluminum inclusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, Donald, what 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 do you think? Well, my my immediate thought is CAI, but but I'm, I'm not a hundred percent convinced. Mm -hmm. Okay. You critic or Howard Dyke classed? Uh, well, actually, CAIs are very different. They're a, a refractory material that formed fairly close to a star, mm -hmm. um, and they normally are seen in carbonaceous chondrites, um, but it's not unusual to see them in very primitive type three ordinary chondrites. But there's a, there's a lot going on inside that as well though. I mean, yes, there is. Other um, minerals, which I, I, I mm -hmm. wouldn't have thought you would have seen in a CAI. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's also many, many different types of CAIs. One of, uh, so a week after next, I'll be at the Meteoritical Society meeting in Chicago and there's an entire afternoon section on CAIs. So there'll be a number of papers presented. And uh, I mean, there looks, to, there looks to be olivine in there and, and metal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pat, well, I wish you luck on attending that seminar because of the uh, uh, Delta variants of the COVID virus. Uh, things could yeah. change almost at an instant. Well, I'm going to be extremely careful. Yeah. There's the planet one. Uh, the, yeah. To me, yeah. that looks like, you know, the small, the tiny blue ball uh, pictures of Earth from. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Man, this is great. Wow. Well, Marissa, I am so happy that you were able to join us and give us this live uh, peek through your eyepiece because. I don't spend enough time with my microscope and you're kicking me in the butt right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to, I need to get in my microscope uh, room. Uh, you got me Jones and hardcore right now. So what a, what a great, uh, what a great experience. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate it so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for allowing me to share that. And, uh, there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> nice. Well, I'll tell yeah, you what, uh, I'd like to see Thanks, a lot Marissa. more. Those were fabulous. Yes. They were. You better put them all in a book. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That would be a good idea. Yeah. Thanks, I'm, Marissa. 
Yeah. Um,